So, uh, last video, we looked at the specifications for a camshaft um, with the service manual and uh, never really compared that to known good, but we looked at one that was late. Also, in the video, I mentioned about little rules of thumb that I like to use in case you don't have a cam card. Or, like me, sometimes too lazy to go look one up. So, I'm going to start this video off with a known good and just go over some general rules of thumb concerning the timing. And then after this, we'll look at, you know, uh, in the spirit of this channel, we'll look at a bad one and um, go over that. So, first off, there's our capture. I like to look at total compression. This is a running engine, it is a four cylinder, it is a 2010 Nissan Altima naturally aspirated uh, VVT on the intake only nothing crazy so compression peaks are kind of even actually they're very even uh, we're running about 74 psi uh, if you ever need to know the rpm of an engine a uh, little off subject but kind of a pico how-to if you just pull the time cur cursors out and you um, do this right here and you look down here in the right corner it says 561 rpm well rpm is revolution per minute we know that from peak to peak is two revolutions per minute so if you multiply that number by two it'll roughly give you the rpm of the engine when the capture was taken so this one was what probably 1100 1120 1150 somewhere around in there um, it's a little off topic but kind of a how-to I do that a lot so I go ahead and explain it what I'm looking at so compression looks good nice and even so I'm just gonna pick a spot here in the middle I like to zoom in on one fire cycle and the first thing I really like to do is just get some cursors out lay off the 720 degrees of rotation and then I like to put in each stroke so we know there's four strokes We've already looked at compression about 73 really good I love looking at vacuum um, vacuum tells a lot it's an easy test and it really tells a lot even if you have a conventional gauge so we come on down here and uh, the scope measures in PSI it says negative 10.93 well if you want inches of mercury basically just double that number so I'm gonna say that's 11 if I double it I have 22 inches of mercury on this engine which for my area is uh, very good so as far as from a looking at timing if we suspected this engine had some timing problems you know cam chain issues this or that I like all right so we have our peak compression and then we come down into our vacuum pocket here I like seeing the 180 mark cut this right in half or to the right a little bit even if it were somewhere in here I like that um, this is fine with me if you remember the on the last video um, I think the 180 cut it down in here and everything was to the right or late um, at the end of this video we're gonna go over a case study I did where a chain was installed incorrectly and everything was advanced so uh, we'll take a good look at that so right off the bat my vacuum's good my compression's good my exhaust timing is you know looking pretty good the valve's opening about somewhere right in there 160 give or take and yeah, it's not without just drilling right down into it mm, looks a little bit odd but uh, I know this is known good this was a perfectly good running engine so I'm going to accept that the valve opening here man it's like a double-edged sword sometimes sometimes you have latency in engines uh, valve adjustment things like that um, I take that information and I just use it with other pit bits of information to to ultimately come to a conclusion but the exhaust ramp here and the intake ramp here are, are really what I look at if I'm looking at timing issues 
deep pockets, leaning towers, things like that, uh, which I'm not going to go over much in this video, but uh, they tend to indicate more of leakage. Uh, so we come across here, our top dead center here. I like to see this ramp fall about 20 degrees after top dead center, about the center of it. And that's about the center, and it's about 380. So just at first glance, I'm liking the timing of this engine. It looks good. Something else, it's quick and easy. I always snap a ruler to zero. And if you look at this plateau right here, this is, a, this is the best place or the only place really to look for an exhaust restriction. And when I mean exhaust restriction, I mean the whole thing will be up. Uh, we're going to explore one with a nose on it here soon that is not an exhaust restriction. Well, I guess it is an exhaust restriction because the valve's closed. But not conventionally like a converter. So, um, and if we look, come over and we look at our, um, our intake valve closing when we actually start building compression. You can see she's starting to make a pretty good swoop upwards right in here. Then about 612, uh, this motor valve closed probably at between 600 and 620. So I would accept that. And um, I would kind of maybe, if, if, this, if this engine had some sort of drivability it, that I was thinking timing, seeing what we've just discussed would uh, kind of lead me in a different direction other than timing. Because I kind of like this, uh, the way this is going. This, this looks good to me. I would focus my attention elsewhere if I had... Like if this were a V6 and I had positive trims on one side and negative trims on the other, usually it could be a timing issue or maybe a clogged exhaust issue. Um, if I saw this, I would kind of maybe lean a different way because this looks good. Not that you couldn't come back to it, but I would kind of start leaning in a different direction. Um, the pocket differential here is very minimal. That's uh, always a good thing. Uh, now this is a Nissan. There's gobs and gobs and gobs of other manufacturers out there. If you suspect some sort of a leak, you can always go to another cylinder and use for your known good. If you're suspecting a timing issue, obviously every cylinder on that bank or on a four cylinder, every cylinder will be off. So you really don't have a known good. That's where kind of these rule of thumbs come in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load up a bad one and we'll look at what a advanced situation looks like Dang it. all right as promised um, this is what a, a really ugly capture looks like uh, the chain was installed on this car wrong uh, I went and took a capture of it uh, just to verify for the dude um, before he tore it all back down this is an 06 Maxima V6 uh, the car did run it didn't run good but it ran. You can see here, zoomed out, I've kind of got a, a raise in compression here. Actually, let me turn this blue channel off. Um, you know, you can kind of see a rise here. You know, the engine's struggling to run, so the throttle plate opened, and you, anytime you add more air, you're going to add more compression. So over here, it's kind of level, so I'm going to focus in this area. Uh, first, right off the bat, I've got 105 PSI idling. Uh, seems high to me, so I keep digging. Just like before, we're going to lay off a, one fire cycle here, and uh, we're going to look into it. 720. A couple of things that really stick out. Obviously, uh, that guy right there. Something that I really don't like is this. It's not a very deep pocket in compared to the intake pull. If it's deeper, it's usually a leak. If it's shallower, it may be the way the cam is ground, but I've looked at a lot of Nissans and uh, that's not the case. So uh, there again, I look at engine vacuum 
and uh, that dude's sporting 9.7, which you figure 9.5 and 9.5 and is 19, a little low, considering uh, the engine before it was 22. All clues, but the biggest clue is this guy right here. So what causes that? Let's put some rulers out. Let's lay off our four strokes again. Okay, starting over here at zero, we see this entire exhaust. Actually, let me zoom in one time here. Let's see if we can make this a little easier to see. There we go. Uh, this entire exhaust valve opening pocket, everything happened way before bottom dead center. Like I said, I usually like to see the 180 somewhere in here or maybe here. And uh, if we do the math real quick, that's about 60 degrees early. You know, 119 to 180, it's about 60 degrees early. So uh, this is definitely a definitely a no-no here. Our pocket differential that we've already talked about is, uh, let's see. Yeah, 2.3 pounds. It may be good for some engines, not this one. So the elephant in the room is, what in the world is this? Uh, we all know, how do you build compression in an engine? You push the piston up, and you push against closed valves. That's how you build compression. So rule of thumb, quick measurement. We have opened, this whole ramp is about 60 degrees early. Well, if things open early, they close early. So if the intake valve is already closed during the exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve closes really early, guess what? The piston's pushing against two closed valves and you get a lot of compression building at the end of the exhaust stroke. And don't get this confused with a clog converter. If you have a clock converter, a lot of times you're going to have a build through the whole ramp. Your overlap period happens in here. Um, some, some turbo cars that I've looked at, they'll have a little hump up. Um, just that's the way the, the cams are made or how the manufacturer is working the overlap. So not every hump is bad. Uh, 14, almost 15 PSI is bad so what happened is uh, like I said the valve closed early and the intake valve hasn't opened so we have built compression so if our exhaust valve closed at say 320 it should have closed around 360 so that you know we're still looking at like 40 50 degrees advanced um, our intake valve I guess opened right in here We started dropping the pressure there again. That's early. I usually like to see the middle of the ramp cross at about 380. It's actually crossing at about 360. So everything there again is, is early. It doesn't matter to me if it, the intake is early or the exhaust is early. Either way, the engine's got to be torn back down. Um, I don't try to set and scrutinize each and every little detail well i do but uh, when i'm on the job site and i'm kind of trying to get to a conclusion as quick as i can i don't care if the exhaust is out you got to tear it down i don't care if the intake's out it's still got to be torn down later i'll go through and scrutinize the whole thing and then luckily i'm able to uh well usually i'm able to see the end result to prove what I saw on the scope screen and of course if we go over here um, when this thing starts building pressure uh, we can clean this up a little bit with a little filter let's do that and uh, we can kind of see this thing starts breaking north pretty good right around in here uh, which is 573 it should be after 600 before the valve closes so 
we've got enough evidence between exhaust opening early, exhaust closing early, intake closing or opening early and closing. We've got enough evidence. Your Honor, guilty. Tear this dude back down. I'm sorry it sucks, but that's just the way it is. Uh, like I said, this uh, this car was man-made. This was not an incident. I very rarely see time and change jump advanced. I don't want to say it's impossible because I have seen it. Most of the time, slack and jumping, usually everything goes late. Um, whenever I see advanced stuff, it's usually man-made. Um, and that was definitely the case of this one. So this was part two. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, it's called It's About Time. I'm going to name this one It's About Time 2. Um, and I think we're going to move on from pressure for a while. I think I'm going to go back into some electrical stuff. But uh, we'll see. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box. I will try to answer. And you guys have a good one.